Same here too. It's all the small this steps. This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the small steps that you take to get to where you want to be, right? It all adds up. So thank you for being here. I think this is going to be a super fun and enlightening uh, session for you guys. And I hope you have like a lot of big takeaways from it. I see that we have Kathy joining us now. Um, ah, <laughs> How wonderful. So nice to see you. You're surprising me. I didn't think you could come. <laughs> the more the merrier, right? And yeah, congratulations, Sue. It, it's been just so amazing just being on this journey with you and watching just the flower blossom, right? And it just, it takes time and it takes, um, you know, belief in yourself and just keep chiseling along and Keep, you know, stay in contact with successful connections because they help encourage you. And even when it gets rough or hard, like you, you can just be inspired by others to just keep going. So, and my, that's my big win too, is just being here and, you know, being so grateful to help other people be successful. And then it helps me be successful as well. So, yeah. All right. I, I want to just throw out a caveat too, before, as Cheryl's getting herself set up. But um, I've had, and not just from Cheryl, but you know, I've had actually quite a few of my programs in the corporate world actually make it to the boardroom. And the reason that they make it to the boardroom is not because they were exceptionally sound instructional design. Most people do not care about that. It's only a problem if it's not well designed. But when something looks sexy and glossy and exciting, it is so attractive, right? And it is so um, sets you apart that you know, working with Cheryl and people just like Cheryl elevate our program work to a completely different level because honestly, no program I design is ever going to make it to the boardroom, but the, the, the case that it's in the carrier that it's in will every single time. And I feel that way about Cheryl too, because she's very modest. So she's certainly not going to ever share this, but Cheryl, how many book covers are you the author of? Well, not the author, but the illustrator. Not the designer. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm on five published books and several that are smaller than, you know, the big, the big sellers. So that's pretty exciting. I I'm happy to, you know, do a lot of uh, different things in the design world. You know, it's, it's, it's really neat. And it's great to just hear the responses from the book authors that, you know, that it's true that you have three seconds to catch the the viewer's eye, right? And so by having an engaging book cover and you're like a little tiny inch by inch and a half thumbnail on Amazon, you have to have a really compelling book cover. And so I'm I'm just really grateful that that's you know been something that I've been a part of and successful too. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. <too. laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So today we are going to um, uncover some really great uh, tips in Canva and how to design templates like a pro. Um, let me see a show of hands. How many here uh, is really proficient at Canva? Yeah, a tiny bit, Kristen. So are, are, would you consider yourself to be more of like a beginner, intermediate? I think I must be an advanced beginner. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, what is your favorite part about Canva? What do you love the most about Canva? Well, it is so highly custom customizable and, and um, you can import your brand stuff right into the templates, which I just recently learned. So, um, <laughs> but but besides that, I'm sure there's like a quadrillion things that I don't know how to do, <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. Fun. And it's, it's fun. You can get, you can definitely get lost, you know, just spend time just designing and playing in canvas for sure. So, but um, if you're in a crunch time and you want to have everything on brand and you want to get your, your decks out and branded and things like that for your programs, then that's what I'm going to show you how to do that. Like, fast and fun and efficient. And so, and if you have any questions, you know, you can uh, let me know and then we'll have time to discuss them and uncover all of those. 
So right now, um, we're going to get started. I'm going to walk through the dashboard for the signature training program mm -hmm. and to where the resources are that for these templates that I'm going to show you how to um, quickly and easily edit them and rebrand them for yourself. And then um, I think, uh, it, will I be sharing a link with them, Sue, for the um, PowerPoint template or did you already share that? I didn't share it. Do okay, so handy? when we get to that point, oh. I'll put it in the chat. I didn't share it if you have it handy. Oh. Okay, so when I get to that point, I can just drop it in the chat maybe or, you know, something that way you guys have that access works. to the template. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be pre-logged into Canva um, in order to open the template though. So if you're not logged into Canva, do that really quick before trying to open the template. Um, but mostly this is about not really having you design anything today. It's really about just learning how to design it and your way around the um, the resources page in the program and also how to quickly update and edit stuff in Canva. And then I'll spend some time reviewing some, some things that you've done. If you have questions, you wanna make something better, you wanna work on colors or anything like that, we'll spend a little bit of time on that. So awesome, here we go. Mm -hmm. While she's pulling that up, this is a new part of the membership section. And one of the things Agnes and I figured out yesterday is we do have you on lockdown. So if you haven't watched each module, you can't get to the next one. So you might have a hard time getting to um, these templates. Um, Cheryl is also my um, guru on the back end. So mm -hmm. this afternoon, she's going to unlock everything. Um, so you'll yeah. be able to just freely kind of go about the membership site because I do think it's important for you to be able to access these templates whenever you need them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'm starting on this page, but to get to this page, if you haven't logged in or accessed the program yet, I'll go back to the home page. And then right here on the tab, it's program access. And then it takes you to the programs. Today we're, we're working on the signature training program. So you can enter the program here and then these are your different topics and contents. And today we're focusing on the bonus content and I'll, I'll unlock this. So right now it does have it where it wants you to go through all the steps before you know jumping forward or backwards. So I'm gonna unlock that. So you'll, you'll be able to go through all of it. And so I designed a, a series of templates for you, design templates and promotional templates to help you get your program off and launched you know, on the right foot and quickly, um, so it saves you time and helps you be more professional right away. So these are the must have design templates. So the deck, this is the one that we're gonna be focusing on a lot today on how to update and edit this. Um, I created a workbook, so it's all just fill in the blanks. You can just re redesign it for yourself and add content. There's 31 pages and you can, you know, remove pages or add pages or, you know, can you can pretty much modify it to suit your needs. Um, these one pagers are really, really good little flyers for you to talk about your services and your offerings and to get more business. And then here's a video page. So this can talk about your whole program. You can embed a video on it. So there's there's lots of great templates that we have prefabricated for you to just help you be successful. And in order to access this template, you would click on this link right here to get to this. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share this link with you in the chat. So okay. And there's the link. Let me know if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll send it to you in a different um, manner, but you know, try it and make sure that if you're logged into Canva, it'll take you to this link. And what you want to do is you want to use this as a template. And what this means is it never edits the original copy that I created. It just always creates a new copy for you. So if you feel like you've messed up these, uh, like if you start designing this, and you feel like you've messed it up or you deleted too many pages. And once you close this out, you can't undo anything that you've done. Um, you can always go back into here and click the link and open the new template. And it always opens the original one for you. So you can design again. 
So don't worry about ever like messing something up. And here you'll, you'll know that it's a copy because it has the name right here. So you can change the name of this, which is what I recommend right away. Um, change the name of it to suit your program. And then you can just hit enter and it'll save the name for you. So this has handy placeholders. These are pictures. Cheryl, I'm just, yes. Cheryl, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt one second. Kathy, did you want to mm -hmm. ask a quick question? You're on mute. You're on mute, Kathy. We can't hear you. I just I found the link in the chat, so now I'm trying to catch up with where you're at. I wasn't sure where you're at. No, I was I I just signed up for Canva because I was not sure where the hell we were. Oh. So, yeah. um, so I'm just using the link now, and it, this is where we go through the the um our dashboard to find this area, and we can build here. So the link is actually the template on Canva from the dashboard. Okay. So you'll and actually be designing a continuous subscription for or something, or is this something we're going to build and then save on our own? Or how does this work? I'm not sure how, what I'm doing. So the template, once you open the Canva link as a template to use as a template, uh -huh. then it, it's always on your Canva account and you don't have to have a paid Canva account to do this. You can just keep your, your free Canva account to update it. And then I'm going to show you how how you're gonna edit the template in Canva, how you can save it, download it, um, you know, make a copy of it, you can share it. So I'm gonna show you um, what you do with the link and how you update and edit the templates. Okay, great, thank you. Uh-huh, and then you can always start over. So if you don't like your template or if you, you know, changed it or modified it, um, you can always click the link back in the dashboard and open a brand new one to start over. So okay. you never you never mess up the original one, which is what I love about the template um, factor yeah. in Canva. So and I will say Canva is totally free. Um, there are added features that mm -hmm. um, I think make it worth buying, especially if you feel like you do a lot of the graphic design stuff yourself. Um, it's mm -hmm. probably one of the cheapest things you will buy. <laughs> they could, I, in my opinion, they could charge a lot more for it. They, and they don't. Um, but in the beginning, just play with the free version. Mm -hmm. And I can just share too, that like Agnes has a um, graphic designer that she uses. So she's going to be sharing these things with her graphic designer. It's perfectly fine. Um, Cheryl often ends up getting hired by many of our clients to design their stuff. If you don't want to do any of this for yourself, she's a great person. Um, you know, we can talk about that later too. So L lots of options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. Thanks for being my wingman <laughs> or wing woman. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. All right. So if you clicked on use as a template and I, and I don't want you to do any work on your template. I just wanted to make sure the link worked for you. Um, I just want to show you how to use Canva, like all the benefits of using this and with your template and what you can do. So um, I'm signed into my Canva account. So the branding and stuff here is going to be for me and you know, not this branding for Sue so that I can show you how you can easily rebrand this to use for your own purposes in Canva. Um, let me give you a quick tour of Canva. And this is gonna be actually really beneficial for you, Kathy, since you just, you're brand new to Canva and um, you haven't seen any of this before. So let me get, make sure my homepage is signed in to me. And you can also collaborate your Canva account with your virtual assistants or your designers. So you can see on here, I have access to several um, other Canva accounts as their designer to create things in here for them. So it's actually a really great feature. I, I, I really, the more I use Canva, the more I just really, really love it. But it's, it has its limitations for designers and that's where it's, it's vital to have designers bring templates and create things for you in here because we can go beyond those limitations. So once you're signed in to Canva, this is the home account right here. And they have this area where you can, you can look at your projects 
You can look at templates you've created. You could look at items that are shared with you. And if you delete something by accident, you can always find it in the trash here. Um, this is my own team. I haven't, I don't, haven't really shared my account with other people because I do the designs. But right here is where you can invite members to come and work on your team and be part of your projects. And coming further down, there's some um, Canva apps. We're not gonna cover those right now. And then you have the brand kit and then a contents planner. This is for the paid. And the brand kit is for the paid version too. So this will be a little bit tricky for you, um, Kathy, but there's ways around this as well. So I'll, I'll help you with that a little bit. Um, but if you have a paid account, you have this brand kit right here. And if you click on brand kit, You'll see that I have this set up with my logo and my colors. And let me show you how easy this is to bring in another brand. So if you're if you're brand new and don't have this set up and you go to brand kit, you can simply just drag this folder over. You could drag a logo in here. And the system automatically pulls all of the brand colors out of this logo for you right here. And so you can keep this and then um, you can rename this right here. It's just says colors for the MXID branding, right? So then now I have this branding in my palette as well. So that's pretty cool, right? Like so fast and efficient, you can set up your brands. And then over here, you would set up your brand fonts. And so if they don't have a font available to you in this in the series of their free fonts, you can actually upload a branded font for you here as well. So I have mine are already set in here. So this is a, a great way to automatically set this up. So when you go into your templates, then you can change them. You can easily rebrand them to whatever colors you set up in the brand. And so hopefully, does anybody have any questions? Is that pretty straightforward and simple? Is everybody like blown away by how easy that is? I just have my, I um, so I have my camera open and, and I, I'm like, I can't, how did you get to the place where the brand is located? <laughs> it, okay, <laughs> let me go back. <laughs> I know it's just the very beginning. Part. Okay, so when you're in the home screen, right? So on yep. the top, go to the home screen, mm -hmm. and on the left, you'll come down on the left side. So you have home projects. Okay. And then it says brand kit down under the tools. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. So then you just click on the brand kit, and it and it shows you what your brand kit is, and you can. If you don't have a brand yet and you're still trying to figure that out, you could add and discover palettes. And so they have pre-made palettes here for you. But let's say you're looking for something specific that you don't see here. You can type in, let's see if you, if you love hot pink, right? So you type in hot pink and then it gives you a variety of color palettes that include hot pink and you can pick one if you like any of these if you don't like the way that the hot pink is is coming out you can just maybe type in pink and it changes the variety of the levels of pink so you can you can pick a brand and it'll add it here and it has the name you can just change the name by clicking in here you know to pink um palette right um and then you can also add new fonts in here as well so does that help you Kristen yeah so that helps me and then and then when you you're are you still going to show us how to import it into the mm -hmm. template yep. okay yep okay sure am. Yep. super okay <laughs> with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all good okay so when you're in the template and then there is a there's a little bar here that comes that comes out. You can just click on it. You can hide this if you're not using it, or you can just bring it out. And this has different options like for photos, um, different elements, different picture frames. If you want to add some some items to your um, deck, so 
But right now we're going to focus just on rebranding this to our new brand. So once you have your brand set up in the home, once you have your stuff here with your fonts, then you go back to the template and on the left hand side, you'll see something called styles. And if you haven't used styles before, you may not see it. And if that's the case, you would just click the three dots and it would bring it up. Because once you click those three dots, it brings up everything. But once you use something, then it has it up close to the top for you. So styles is here since I use it. When you click on styles, it brings up the brand palettes that you have in here. So this is the MX ID brand, which the PowerPoint is already branded to this. And this is my brand right here. So all I would do is I would click on my brand and it automatically changes the colors. And if I don't quite like that, I can hover back over my colors and I can hit shuffle and it'll just recolor all of the slides based on my palette until I like it. So you can just keep shuffling it and it just gives you all these varieties until you like something. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you the option to apply that look to all of the pages, which instantly changes the look of all of the pages. So I've changed the color on this, but now I need to change the font. So the font, this is not my font. This, this font is for the MX ID. So I need to get my font in there. And so I need to, when I click on here, let me go to my brand click kit. Hold on one second, because now it has just hers in there. I'm going to edit. I want to use mine. Hang on one second. Technical difficulties here. I want to, it should have it here. I'm not sure why it has hers here, maybe because I imported this, but if I want to change this, what we can do, changing this title to my title, I'm going to, mine is the pop-ins. So I'm going to just select that since it didn't give me that. And then I'm going to change all the titles from Playfair to pop-ins. And so it changed it all, changed all the titles. And then for the body comp copy, um, she is using the, this is the open sand. So I want to change this. Well, mine is Molly. So right here, these are up untitled brand open sands. Oh, cause hers is the untitled. So I wonder what happened to mine that is in here with the pop-ins. So that is open sands on there. So yeah, it changed it all to my fonts, the pop-ins. Let me look at something really quick because I'm not sure. So this is, should be Molly is my body copy. And I wonder if I have to remove hers so that mine will show up. Because this kind of threw me off a little bit. I wasn't expecting that. Sorry about that. So I'm going to refresh the page. Oh, this is a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we got to start over using this template but i don't know this why is the you beauty of the of... template you just start again yeah you can just start again but i'm not really sure where my styles went oh so here's my font so i guess it just by adding her font it like overwrote mine for some reason so that's very interesting so um so if i go here to my colors again and I have them um, shuffle through until I like, I like this, you know, pomegranate color a lot. And then I apply that to all of my pages. And then I change all of the fonts to my fonts and I apply it to all of the pages. Now it should be correct. So Molly is my body font and Poppins. So when you set up your brand, then that confusion won't happen to you. It's only because I added another brand that it wanted it to be, you know, the, the top one. And you'll see on here, so I just changed, I just branded this, right? Just with colors and fonts, which is the first step. And now I can bring my logo in here and add it into this placeholder. And I can just drag a picture in here. And when you have the free version, you can, for these photos, 
you can go over to the left and you can go to photos. And then there, there's this search, this filter right here. If you have the free version, you can just search for free photos only. And then it conveniently brings up all the photos that are free and you can search in here. You can search for any, you know, they have so many free photos in here, but let's, let's search for creative, right? So I could choose a really cool photo if I want to do a presentation about color and you just simply drag it into the picture holder right here. And if you don't like the size of it, if you don't like the position of it, you can double click it and it allows you to deeper edit it, move it over, and then you just click off and see how you can just easily adjust the size of it. It automatically scales stuff. Um, evenly, so you don't have to hold shift or anything like that, like you would in other programs, you would have to hold shift to get it scaled evenly. And then to get my logo here, um, I would go to the uploads and then you can drag it in here. Well, that one's not a good one because of the color. So I would drag it in here and this one still isn't the right logo color because of the background because the, the text is the same color. So for this case, I would probably want to change this red color and you can do this individually based on your needs. I could either put a white box behind my logo or I could just simply change this background color to a branded color that's lighter. Um, even for mine, I can go with white. Um, so you just kind of play around with it to see what works out the best for you. But it kind of seems like I might just want to put a box behind there because the colors look so good together, minus the logo. And I do have another version of my logo that's light that I could upload, but just for our time right now, um, I'm gonna go over here to elements. Elements is where you add shapes and they have a variety of free shapes and, and things for you. And so this would be all of the shapes I could add behind my logo. I can do a square. So you just click it it automatically um, gives you a square that's in your primary color in your palette. So I could change that and I could change that to white. And then these little lines right here allow you to adjust it. So I could just bring it across here. Now you can see that it's in front of my logo. So to get it behind my logo, I just simply right click with my mouse and I send it backwards. And then there you go. Now you can see my entire logo. It still looks like a good brand. If you don't like this line right here, you can simply just click on it and you can hit the backspace to delete it. And if you want it to be a little more creative, you could take the white line and you could bring it all the way over. So there's so many easy ways to quickly update and edit these decks. And it goes the same for all of them. You just click on the text and you can, you know, just add your own title. So this could be the agenda, right? And then each of your items here, each text box, everything is completely editable on here. I, I have a question. Um, so when I tried to dump my logo into my little box where, where you did it, it doesn't quite fit. And, and I'm trying to, and when I enlarge the box, it's it doesn't fit equally. That makes uh -huh. sense. Is there yeah. is there a trick to that? <laughs> so there's two ways that you can do that. Mm -hmm. So here. So I have this. If you you can since it's a picture placeholder, you can always delete the image that's in there, and it gives you back the rectangle mm -hmm. for that image. So um, there's two options when doing that you can either just copy your logo over oops, and resize it or oops i drag it into the box so you can do that too you can drag stuff into a box accident into a photo box um let's just go with my icon and we'll put it here so this is what you're talking about right so it doesn't shape it right because it's mm -hmm. not the right size. Yeah. So what you do at that point then is you just click on your image one time 
and you go to crop and then you just crop out the box you want to crop it out and then come on and then you would resize it it's not cooperating come here Wow, it's not allowing me to edit that. So usually you can just resize the shape of this, but this one's not, this one's being kind of stubborn. So in this case, then you can either change the frame mm -hmm. to be, if you need a circle or more of like a square shape, this is a versus a rectangle, or you could just, add your logo. This is the tiny one for my website. You can add your logo and resize it. So it's, it's not like exact, you know, I mean, it's a really good program. So you can still do this, but because logos are different sizes, that would be my recommendation to do that. So either change the frame to be more of the right shape mm -hmm. or just bring your logo on the top and get rid of the frame altogether Okay. to do that. So but yeah, kind of interesting. I've been able to just resize the different shape logos before to accommodate, but this time it wasn't agreeing with it. Um, this slide Girl, right here. I, I'm going to pause just one second. Is anyone trying this on their own? Have you, so I know Kirsten is right. Kathy, Agnes, you guys taking a try? Are you, yeah. Okay. And anything you want to show us or share with us or ask about? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can share what I have been doing, but my logo doesn't fit exactly on any of the frames. Can I show you? Yeah, let me make you let me make you co host. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Can you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So here this is the frame that I picked. Um, and this is my logo, the one on the left. Uh -huh. it's, it's not exact square. It seems like it's a little wider, right? Uh -huh. than the, the height. So that's why it doesn't. Yeah. You can see the, all the layers. So I don't know which one to pick too. So you could actually just get rid of the frame altogether and then just click your logo once and it'll appear, just click it and then just resize it on there. So why do we need the frame? Right. <laughs> why do we need the element? Why do, why do we need um, it? It's just more of like a placeholder. So you know that you can put an image there or that's where your logo should go on this slide. And a lot of times people have rectangle logos that'll fit in there pretty accurately. But um, the, the thing that one of the downsides of Canva is a lot of the frames aren't, you can't adjust them exactly the way that you need them to accommodate every logo. So you kind of just have to see what works best for you, but you always know that you have the placeholder there and that's a good place to put your logo. If it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't fit, just remove it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks good. Super colorful. Um, I mean, I just put th I threw that picture there just for now, but my actually my cousin made this for me. It's so beautiful. It's, been, it's, been it's really beautiful. I love it. Yeah. It's so fitting for your work, you know? Yeah. So see all the sizes are here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's reality, <laughs> right? That's all. <laughs> we're all we're all curvy, and you know we have our different shapes, for sure. So, and I I think honestly on this one, so I see that you have a couple of logos that don't have the white background mm -hmm. on them. Um, in your case, you could actually where the blue background is. I would actually make that white, and I would make the the text the purple color. And then I would put the logo without the white background there. I think that it, it would be um, more dominant on the white background with the dark letters around it than on the blue. So should I go back to uh, 
No, you just go right, you just edit it right on your slide. Oh, okay. And you know, you oh, can. Okay. Um, so make it white, you said? Yeah, but you're gonna lose your text. So you should make your text purple first, right? Cause it's white on white. So I would make the text purple. And then I would change the, the blue to white. Right? Doesn't that look like so clean and it just, the logo just pops out. It's not competing with the blue at all. So you, so that's a good way to do that. And then um, on this one, you could actually, I know this probably isn't our like review design moments, but. That's okay, take um, it, yep. I, I would actually center the signature training program over the logo because everything else in your logo is centered. So yeah, just center it there. Yeah, see how good that looks. And then it creates balance. So you're not just overwhelmed with color. You're just, you can see the eloquent um, logo and then you see the image on the, on the right and it all ties together. So I wanna point out a little something too. I know we're working with brand X, but a lot of times, um, you know, if you're designing something to go on social media or, you know, you're putting together a flyer, it doesn't always have to be your brand. Like, I don't believe that necessarily. And sometimes the colors just look really good. If you click the color, the color um, palette now, see where it says animate to the left of animate and go down a little bit, it picks up all the photo colors. So if you wanted the text to match a color from the photo, you could pick that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it picks up all your photo colors. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like these little things that just make yeah. it super simple to really play, you know, play around with things. Mm -hmm. That was under animate, did you say? No, under the, under the color box. Oh, okay. Yep, so Next when you click the color box, when you go down for any photo that's on that screen, it shows you the photo colors. Mm -hmm. that's yes, like, right, now I was going to just say for me right now, I don't even have a logo for Disruptive Spark. There's nothing. Um, but I found an image of colors that I liked. So I just put that image on the page and I took the colors right from there. Like I didn't even have to guess what, what they were. So mm -hmm. um, you know, for non-design people, it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's so good. And that's what I was going to actually show Kathy. So um, let me go ahead and, and share my screen again. Thanks, Agnes, for sharing that. Hopefully Thank that you. was helpful, right? Very. And then, <laughs> Thank you. But you didn't, I, I see that the rest of your template is still the navy blue. It's still the MX ID color. So you didn't apply that to all of the, all of the slides, but you can easily apply it to all the slides. Like if you go down to the next one and you change the color, it'll ask you if you want to apply it to all the slides so that you the whole presentation is changed to your colors, right? And so for for Kathy, this is a good thing. If you can't, if you have the the free version, which is fine, it's perfectly fine to have the free version. Um, you can just see this right here, the two squares and one has a plus. This is you're, duplicating. You're not sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. No <laughs> I forgot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. <laughs> I'm all working without you. <laughs> okay. So here you have these options above the slides. So you can duplicate a page or you can create a new page. Um, if you don't have a, a brand because you have the free version, you can either work on a slide or for me, it's best to just add a blank page and I'm going to just delete the background. I just click on it and hit backspace, but you can actually um, just find, let me show you, let's go to photos and let's find something colorful, right? Bright colors. So let's say I really like these colors right here. I'm, I'm like, I want to create my brand using these colors right here. So what I do is you can go to an element and I don't need a frame. So you can click out of that. So I have this frame right here. 
but I want to I want to start working with these colors right here. So I would go to this color box right here. And uh, maybe because it's branded, it doesn't work so good for this example. You know what? But I think it's um I think it's because you're picking on the would you get the color palette if you didn't have that box up? Uh maybe. Let's oh, but you have to you have oh, to yeah, have some kind of a box, right? So I wonder, because it should, and I think it's because I already branded it for mine, but you should be able to change this color. And it usually, so there's the pink palette. It would be like, oh, photo colors, it's there. See where um, it says photo colors, but it's your brand. Yeah, and I think it's because I set it up on my brand. So if I hadn't have set this up on my brand, brand so maybe i have to show you this using um just something else so let me create a blank design um let me just create a flyer okay so this doesn't really have anything so i'm gonna go you can also copy and paste stuff so with using your shortcut keys which is Control c or command c depending on if you have a mac or a pc and then you can just paste it in here by control V. So let's see here if it will, oh, here we go. So this one, because I already set the brand and I told it to apply it to all the slides, then it doesn't give me the extra options to change the colors. So for you, Kathy, then this would work for you. You could find a color or a logo that has your colors and put it on a blank page and then Go to change the color of something, whether it's adding a square, right? Um, and then going to these colors. And then here are all of these photo colors that you pull out of here. So you can easily set up your brand this way by using a logo or a picture that you want to, you know, pull the colors from. It'll do it for you on the free version. That's how you would do it here. So you, you have access to every color in this palette. It automatically generates them for you. And then if you hover over the colors, it gives you the color code. So if you're like really, really in love with this purple, then that would be the color code that you would write down so that you can start building out, you know, a brand for yourself. And so that that really helps right there. Does that does that help you, Kathy? So give us a temperature check. Is this what you were hoping for? Is there something else that you're looking to see? Where do you want us to head from here? Do you want to work a little bit more on the on the PowerPoint? Are you ready to shift into um, just sort of talking about maybe some designs you already have? Let us know. What are you thinking? This is really helpful. I was wondering if we could also, I could also get, I don't know if uh, others are interested in getting a template for a newsletter or, uh, or a blog. What would be your um, suggestions to keep also the same brand colors and mm -hmm. same fonts and things like that? I mean- Actually, that's a great, I'm so happy to hear you say this because we were actually really curious what other templates would be valuable Mm -hmm. um, so if we kind of go back, Cheryl, if you have, so we, we gave you the ones specifically that we think are most helpful for courses. Mm -hmm. So the reason I love a branded deck is because then you're just dropping content and you're not worrying about the design of the slide. Um, and maybe you'll end up making a couple of extra slides. So, so it's sort of quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, of course, the PowerPoint and or, or the workbook and the other things that you saw. Can you go back, Cheryl, and show them what's in the promotional side? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we don't have blog or newsletter, but I'm not unopposed to adding anything that anyone feels is super valuable. So mm -hmm. in the. Um, yeah, and even like these one pagers, too, these are like for services and things, but you could easily change these as well into like a, a newsletter or a, a short blog. But let's go back to the um, and those just while you're going to the other side, I'm going to show you like so those one pagers were, were came from me. 
because I do, and I, and, and I know a lot of you do, Agnes, I know you do, Kirsten, I think you do, Kathy, I'm not sure, but if you do like free live trainings, um, people don't always necessarily sit through the training. So what we'll do is take the key points from that training, put it in a one pager, and we'll link the replay video right to the one page document. So all of a sudden that piece of content you shared once, like our goal is always, can I share it three or four times? Like how many times can I reuse and repurpose? So I'll do a live stream. From that live stream, I make static posts that become social shares. We do a one page document that then we send out like via email. Um, some of them sit on our website, like it's a blog. Um, so, so those one pagers are kind of like great little templates for you to just dump content in, and then you can just link things. Remind me, Cheryl, we're going to show, show them how to link a video link, um, a, I, you know, so on with the link button, you can link a video, you can link a, um, your website. If you want them to go to your website, I literally go in and a lot of times I don't go through all the work of creating like a, a sales page. I'll do a one page in um, Canva and I'll link, uh, uh, you know, a button to click on to go to my, what, my bill pay system. And you can play, I think all of you experience that. Like you just click right on that link. So show them real quick what's in the, um, the promotional side. Cause I think that's really what Agnes is, is talking about a little bit mm -hmm. more. Yeah, so in here we have a full on services page and and actually all of these one pagers are so versatile that you can use them for multi you know purposes like this has the images of clients that you work with so this is a really great um, flyer to promote your business. Um, here's another program flyer, but all of these layouts could easily be turned into a blog or you know a newsletter. And they're and they're all really versatile. And if you use StreamYard, then here's a template for this overlay, which you can fully customize the text on there and change the social medias. And also has the background that you can import behind your video. And then here's the podcast pitch one, which this one would be um, really good as a newsletter uh, layout because then you could create the links here on the right side. So, so yeah, all of these are super, super beneficial for you to use. Um, Could you make a, a blog out of a Canva post or would that be something different, Cheryl, just out of curiosity? Um, like when, I, when I think so, of blog post, yeah, I kind of think of like, it sits on my website, but I might be. Nice yeah, it, it would be better as your, yeah, it's, it's better fitted to do like an, um, a newsletter that you can, you know, send to somebody, you know, as like a, an image or a PDF, but yeah, blogs generally, I mean, you can work the layout here and what you want to say, and then, you know, share it uh, via email, like a newsletter, and then link it back to your website, to the blog. Um, but yeah, this, this is better set up to use Canva for newsletters and advertisements and, you know, information for your your clients or soon to be clients, if that makes sense. Agnes, so, do a quick search in Canva and see if they, they must have a newsletter template. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they definitely do. So Let's take a quick look at that. Cause maybe that's helpful too, to just show how you can use their templates. Yeah. And then the, it's always the same thing, right? So newsletter, um, then you just see, they have all kinds you know, different things that you can choose from and they're already pre-formatted and you can just simply rebrand them with your colors. Just if you like a layout, if you think that, you know, there's something that looks the way that you would, you know, display the amount of text and images and borders and things like that. So like this one probably would be good for Agnes because of the bold colors and the layout and she could easily change these colors for her brand with the purples and the blues. So then you would just click on it and then it opens it up for you to edit, right? And then you would just, you can, you can like duplicate it. So when you're just starting out and really playing around, I always make a copy of something in case I really mess it up, just getting too crazy with designing, but you can then go to styles and then you can just rebrand it for yourself, right? 
whichever way you like it, you know, to look the best. And I like, I always go with the lighter backgrounds and the vibrant. So then I would apply this to all pages. And then I would change the font and I would apply it to all pages. So then it's, you know, it's my fonts here already. And then you just need to change the content and the pictures. Like, so it's super easy, right? I love it. Great question, Agnes. Kathy, Kirsten, anything you want us to look at specifically for either one of you? I, I was curious um, where we, how we embed the link um, in the Canva document, because it's not obvious to me um, if we're trying to have a click through link somewhere in, in a Canva document. Can okay. you show an example, Cheryl? Yes, yes. So let me share. Yeah, some of the things in Canva are just a little bit hidden. So if you don't know, like, you know, where to look. So here is, here's the newsletter. So if I want to link this text right here, you just click on the, the text. And then you have these three dots here, which op open up more. And then this allows you to create the link right here. And then you would just put in the link. Okay, perfect. And that's it. Thank so. You. And, and then and I'm sorry, I'm going to jump in just for a second, Cheryl, but Kristen, I know you feel this way too. Like you, you don't always need all the big fancy technology. We'll take, go to the element and they have buttons. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just put the, you know, get your button, put register here on the button. And then when they click it, they click to your link and it takes them right to the next place. When you think about the program workbook that you guys have, that's all we did is that that is a, uh, an icon. And then in the icon, we put the link to the place that it was in the training program. So think about that too. I mean, how, how nice is that, right? To, for your participant, one of the things that they tell us all the time is I can't find it. Like I, that, that's, that's literally 90% of what you deal with. Where is the video? I can't find it. How do I get there? Um, when you make it super easy for people to not have to go looking, click a button and it takes you right to the space. So, so helpful. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah, then, go ahead. Joe. Sorry. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when you, um, when you download it as a PDF, it keeps those links yes. in the PDF that you sent to them. So, oh, let's, so yeah. do you want to do that really quick too? You want to show them how to download? Yes. So it when you're so commonplace, creating... but that tripped me up a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's several different ways that you can share documents in Canva, depending on what your purpose is. Sometimes you have like only a uh, view only that you want to just have somebody see something. Just pull up your screen, Cheryl. Um, yep. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. So I'm going to, I don't need this one, but let's go back to this newsletter. This is a perfect example. So let's say that I want to, to share this with my clients or my students. Um, you would click this share button right here. And then it gives you several different options. Like you can give a view link only if you don't want them to edit it. If you just want them to read it, you would click this. Um, you could do a quick recording presentation of, of this document. Um, you could present it, which goes into like uh, the present mode when you're giving a presentation via like PowerPoint. And then it gives the whole screen becomes the document. Um, and then here you can, Click this and create a template link, which is the links that we have over here. These are the template links. So they never actually edit the, the original document. They always get a copy of it. You can share it on social media. If you have the paid account, you can share it on your social media. Um, you can actually get this, send it to a printer. They have the more options here. So you can get the code to embed it in your website. If it's a video, you can share it for them to watch the video. You can save it to a folder. You can create a QR code. Like Canva is really, really impressive uh, the way that you can share all of these items, right? And so the most important one, if you want to just download this, you can download it here. And it gives you the size. And this is an image, but we don't want an image because we put a link in there. 
we want this to be a PDF. So there's a PDF, which is the small standard size, which is perfect for emailing because it doesn't need to be large and the images and everything would be optimized. Or you could do, if you want to, if it's not a big document, you can do a high quality. So if somebody's viewing it on a large screen, it'll look really amazing. Um, if you created a video uh, or made any animations, you would uh, download it as an import MP4 video. And that way they can watch it as a video. And you could also, if you do quick animations, just share it as a simple GIF. So Canva is really fun if you, um, if you want to make a gift for somebody's birthday or celebrate their stepping stones, you could create a, a quick little animated video here and then download it as a gift and share it, you know, to your group. And so um, for this one, I would say just, you know, make it a PDF print and then you have the option. Um, and this is the same with the deck too. You can download all the pages or you can select just the one page that you want and then you just download it and it downloads it as a PDF with your links in it. And um, one thing else that I wanna tell you that's really uh, important, when you're working with the deck, I'm gonna delete this extra page I added. Um, all of the pages in any document that you're working on has a place for you to put a title here. So over here, it just has like the name of the template, right? brown pink so it doesn't really mean anything but in the deck I named these based on what type of slide it is so this is the main title slide this is the agenda or program this is the topics pillars mission vision values program options like this is a super versatile slide right here this is a section slide with a full image you can put your big title there subtitle so everything is named but what happens when you name this and why this is really important, if you want to just use some of the pages, when you download all of this, it downloads it in a zip file. And if you don't have names here, each of the items will just come out as one, two, like, like that is their name is just the number one, the number two. So in your download file, you have no idea what the, the pages are, the PDFs are. But if you name these, then when you download it and you, and you open extract your zip file, everything is labeled. So you can just use that section title if you want to share that with somebody or in your documents, you know, if you're doing an ebook or something, you, it's important to name these. So when you download it in bulk, it keeps the name of what each item is. And you're not just wondering what is number two, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I want to just show something really quick because this is one of my favorite things about like Canva is so amazing. Mm -hmm. So I have a services flyer that I always send and on there, um, it's a couple of pages. It has testimonials. You know, it has a place that you can book a call. So on my business card, I actually did that as my QR code and I took it from Canva. And mm -hmm. the other thing that we've been doing a lot of is creating a flyer um, in Canva and then creating the Canva, taking the Canva code and putting that in, um, in the visual. So if you have a Facebook banner in your group, if you have, you know, it's really hard to, um, you can't really click anything, but if you put a QR code there, which you can get from Canva, it can take you to anything. So if you wanna take somebody to something, um, you know, those, those QR codes are right there. Mm -hmm. And like when I did, so, so at the presentation, I had a resource guide that I wanted to give people. So I made the resource guide in Canva, I took the QR code, and I put that in my presentation and in the middle of the presentation, they actually, and I, I, I did the same thing for um, the feedback. So nobody ever fills out the feedback thing because they never like go there. So at mm -hmm. the end, I took a, I took a slide and I took a big Canva code. Mm -hmm. And so they went right to the feedback evaluation form. So that, that, mm -hmm. that there's so much goodness in Canva that mm -hmm. it's, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane around with it. And um, Kirsten was part of the first version of the program. In the beginning, I really didn't know what information truly needed to be on my worksheets. So we made them in Canva and we linked them. We made the Canva versions and linked 
the version directly to the uh, member site. So mm -hmm. every time I needed to make a change, which was a lot back then, um, <laughs> I could just go into my Canva account and change the main Canva one and it changed it in my system. So we had some mm -hmm. issues with that. If you remember, Kirsten, they're not as, um, they're not as user friendly as what you guys have now, but it would have been a constant downloading and uploading, downloading, uploading, mm -hmm. downloading, and upload. like it would have been a nightmare when I was making all those tweaks in the beginning, you know, what Kathy and what Agnes have are the product of me running this a whole bunch of times, working out all the kinks, knowing actually what needs to be there. And on, I wish I had it to show you side by side, but the original documents we had to the version that they are today are night and day. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. last version was done for me in design, fancy, you know, that's when I spent the money but not in the beginning, I used the Canva account because it's just, it's fluid, it's quick, it's easy. It allows you to make real-time changes. Mm -hmm. It's expensive, right? To hire a, a graphic designer, um, you know, it's expensive and worth the money at the same time, but only if it's proven content. So when mm -hmm. you think about the process we're going through, you know, until you've run these sessions a couple of times, I would much prefer to see you even hire someone like Cheryl or an overseas VA, you know, anyone you want, you don't have to be the one doing them, but if they create them for you in your Canva account, you can go in and edit as you need to. Mm -hmm. And that was really important. And that actually saved me a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, so anyone making worksheets or flyers for their programs, things like that, especially in the beginning, I would not have them created someplace, like I would have it created in Canva where you can then manipulate words and make mm -hmm. changes. Um, that worked really well for us. So I would chicken scratch everything out <laughs> and I send that to Cheryl and she would put it into Canva for me. And then I could go in and manipulate it however I wanted and then when I had the version of what I wanted, then we went and um, put it into InDesign and made you know the big booklet out of it. Mm -hmm. So we're right at about the 215 mark. Is there anything else that anyone wants to talk about like Canva chat or anything else, just as far as overall design of your program or your materials? Um, well, happy to answer any questions or have any just general discussion about anything you've been thinking about. Um, we know for a fact that a lot of people tell us, you know, especially being a subject matter expert, having solid materials that look really good, right, that are visually appealing and stylish actually increases their confidence when they're selling, when they're presenting, you know, me being, you know, on stage in this big environment, knowing I had something beautiful behind me was such a, you know, something to, to, to really hold on to. So don't underestimate the value of really paying attention to the look of things um, mm -hmm. as, as you're building them, because it is really important. Um, and if there's anything you want to show us and just get a little feedback, Kirsten, I know you have like a flyer or something you've created. If there's anything that you want to um, put in front of Cheryl and have her say, tweak this, tweak that, because she's got an eye like nobody <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Sue. laughs> yeah, wow. and just to, before you share, I, just to touch on what Sue was saying, like, you know, the templates that I designed for you in Canva are to really make you look super established and professional. Because sometimes, you you know, if you're not a designer and you just put something together um, and then everything you have looks totally different and is all over the place, then your audience, you know, feels like you're an amateur. But you want them to really believe that you are a pro at this, you have all your stuff together, your look is amazing. And you know, that's what these templates are there for to just help you get that look, you know, that you you're not an amateur, you know, you're a professional, you're an expert in what you do. And, you know, it's just the tools to help you be successful. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I have a logo I've been using for quite a while. And I'd like to almost I was wondering if you can kind of dismantle something you know, upload it, dismantle it, and kind of use pieces of it? Or if, is, is that an option within Canva? 
No, not in Canva. Um, Canva doesn't have the abilities to edit in that manner. Um, it can like remove backgrounds and things like that. And it can kind of change colors and hues and textures of photos and things. But um, you would need a program like Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator to actually, you know, redo your logo or rebuild it or remove pieces. But um, yeah, so it's Canva is amazing. But as a designer, I have to use my design programs to bring in the unique items that Canva doesn't provide. Kathy, do you want to get a little advice on your logo from Cheryl while she's here? Do you want to show it? I can bring it up. Yeah. I, I think it's a little stiff and it, it's, <laughs> I can find it. I just gonna, um, so how, how old is your logo? Like, was it, has, has your business, your vision, everything changed since you had the logo made? Oh gosh. For you? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, do, 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 marketing. Here we go. Yeah, I've had it. I keep um, moving things. So this is <laughs> the next old one. That's even older. Ugh. Is it yeah, on the website mean, or something? Oh, here we go. Okay. So I don't know. Can I drop it in the chat? Is that what I can do with that? You want to just share your screen? I gave you permission to share. You can just pull it up and share it if you want. Or you oh, can drop right. it in the chat, whatever you want to do. Here. Okay. This is it. Okay, share screen. So this is, I don't know if I can make it bigger. There we go. Established 1991. Boy, you're a veteran, huh? Well, well I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what it, tell me what you want to change about it and what is your vision? Are these still your colors? Do these colors resonate with you? Um, you know, and, and I, I don't even know what your business is really. So maybe tell me a little bit about your business and what you're doing and what your vision is. And then we can go from there. Okay. So IBC started out as a bookkeeping business and it was pretty much purely bookkeeping and it has evolved. I don't do any bookkeeping anymore. I have people on my staff to do bookkeeping, but I do a mini, um, I more or less try to help guide business owners into a greater profitability, better bottom lines kind of a thing. So we do do bookkeeping. So, cause you gotta have solid numbers so you know what you're working with. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's so much more than what, because it was IBC Bookkeeping Solutions. And then I changed oh. the name. It's IBC Business Solutions because it's not just bookkeeping. Um, and I, I, I originally I was, wanted the confidence and I wanted people to be confident in our numbers. And so that's why it was supposed to be like establishment or mm -hmm. it was kind of a, yeah, uh, it was supposed to be kind of a pillar so people could really lean on us and know that they are feel confident in what we do. I want to feel substantial and solid. And this kind of exudes, I think, some kind of th that flavor. Mm. But now we are more into, or I'm into, you know, we do that plus more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it, really. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when, when I see the logo and the designs on it i kind of think it's like a a law firm or you know legal forms or something i would have no idea that you would be doing accounting or anything like that um i i do like the established 1991 like that's that's super cool um you could have a really good uh, vintage logo you know made um or what about the colors they're they're super masculine and um I don't know if bold is really a good word, maybe strong mm -hmm. on there. Um, I was thinking money, green and gold, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's green what and I gold. was kind of thinking that well, along those lines. So I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, so cool. I don't, I'm not stuck on them. No, I don't. I honestly, I don't love them. Uh-huh. 
that was just the original thought process. Oh, I did a logo in a day. It was kind of a workshop, do a logo in a day. And oh. then left it into a website, a website in a day kind of thing. And we was just get shit done, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things. So no, that's, that's perfect. Um, yeah. And I think that, I think the letters, the IBC font, you know, that's, it's kind of, it might even be like Times New Roman with the, the little serif beat on there. So that's super professional and business. Um, I think that the dark greens mean like um, really serious, you know, so it's, uh, and with the, um, the leaves going around the edges, um, that's why it just thought it was be like, that's what you would see for lawyers and courtrooms and things like that. So I, I think you could have a really softer green logo that's not so serious that makes you a lot more approachable and also like just represents your business in a whole as a whole instead of um, right here. Like I, I really don't. How would I find you on, you know, Google searches or any social media? Because I don't by your logo. I don't really know what you do. It tells me that I could get legal forms from you and not accounting or other like what kind of solutions could I get from you mm -hmm. so I I think um a softer logo with softer green colors that still represent money and maybe uh maybe adding a tagline of what what are your solutions you know are they technical solutions financial solutions um you know something that just so I know exactly when I see it who you are um, are you too serious for my fun creative business? You know, like I would be worried as a creative person that's super vibrant, like your business might not fit my personality because I'm creative and fun and bright. So you have to think about how does your audience see you? Um, I know you're super successful and that's because of you really. But if you want an online um, presence, I would definitely, you know, tone down the logo a little bit, make it a little softer and represent what you do you know more visually than than what it does yeah i like the vintage idea i, I do like that mm -hmm. that's cool too um i have my brother has had i kind of the, the circle thing is what i was taking from him but he's got a logo it's kind of off to this kind of like a slash um mm -hmm. kind of tipped and yeah, I don't know. I could show you, maybe show you his if you don't mind. Sure. I don't know if you you'll created have that yourself, Kathy? I'm sorry? You created that yourself? The logo? Yeah. Yeah, I had some help, you know, and I was pulling things <laughs> out. Pulling things that was together. so good, though. And, and you've, and like, had it a long time. It served you really well. Yes. Well, in a few years, yeah. Yeah. So here's two years in business is dog years. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I was part. I I've been doing this myself as long as that, if not more. But mm -hmm. that that particular IBC, there were previous owners that I was an employee of, and they retired. And I and I asked them. I said, "Can I say that we're we've been established since '95?" They were like, "Of course," because you know I just continued there their business so do you think you want to keep the ibc name or do you think you want a whole new a i whole wouldn't new name? mind yeah i wouldn't mind doing yeah something totally different but i don't want to lose that because ibc has been around yeah. established in this area in sure. 91 so mm -hmm. that was a thing you know for a long time and the if you googled something in the area we popped right up on the first page just organically yeah you know, that's good mm-hmm so that's why I kept it. They had encouraged us to keep it because we knew about Google. I, I mean, I took over mm -hmm. in 2010 mm -hmm. when it was my business. And um, so that was that. But here's that vintage I was telling you about, Ed. That's I don't cool. know yeah. bigger, but mm -hmm. um, that's yeah, that looks, that's book. really good. Yeah, that's that's like fun. Like that's yeah, it's a little more fun. He's he's my he's the artist. Well, he went down that path. I mean, I, I've taken a lot of art too, but I wanted to eat. I like to eat and all I get to do, so I decided to go numbers versus the art, artistic route. Um, I just yeah. like to 
too much. But here, here's my brother Ed. So that's that's when I did the circle thing. I said, "Can I steal that idea?" He's like, "Of course." Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, okay. and you're right. When, when you're established and people recognize who you are in your area, then yeah, it's important to not drastically change your look, but you can soften it up a bit. And mm -hmm. you can also use that to get in touch with all of your clients like, hey, we're doing a little upgrade to our branding, check us out and put you back in touch with people that maybe you haven't talked to in a long time. And it helps them like grow with you and, and reintroduce the conversation with them again. So, so there's advantages to. Yeah, you know, that's actually really fun, Cheryl. That's a great point. Like the rebrand becomes an entire conversation that you yep. can have over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And I, and I, we talk about this in my company and you know, I can't tell you how many times I end up getting pieces of new business simply because I go back to my client list on a regular basis and just ask them how they are. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, how's it going? What are you working on? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, I, I could actually use your help with blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, that happens a lot, mm -hmm. especially if they've already, you know, worked with you and, and like you. So that could be like a whole little, you know, marketing yeah. campaign um, in the, in the changing mm -hmm. of, you know, this, this new, new logo for you. I would like to keep that tree. I mean, I did have uh -huh. them pull that out. So I was uh -huh. thinking as I'm rebranding or doing something, I have pulled that out and used that for things on its own. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's good. Like an icon, uh, like an icon of your brand. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's really good. And then also your clients that you've had for many years may not know about the additional services. So it's also a great time to tell them about how you've grown and you're offering more valuable services to them to help them grow. Well, that's so, what yeah. this is all about. So I want to put something formal together that, you know, they, mm -hmm. they you know, this is what I'm offering instead of, cause I've been doing one-offs kind of custom and it's just, I cannot scale that way. And there's no, no huh? rhyme or reason it's all custom. Like, Oh, let's take a look at your books and let's see how it's mm -hmm. going. And, and there's nothing real solid as far as, Oh, we're going to go down this path and we're going to go, do this, 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 mm -hmm. and this. And here's your measurables. Here's where we're starting. Here's where we're taking, taking a pulse. And here's where we're going to end up. And that's why I'm doing this because I want to be able to go back to all those previous clients and people I've known and say, okay, we got something solid to really offer you. That's different. It's not just the bookkeeping. It's not just mm -hmm. accounting or getting stuff ready for the tax person. It's, yeah. you know, what, what do you do with those numbers? You know, yeah, I love it. I love it. So this is like all connected, right? It's the perfect all time connected. to kind of just be, you know, realizing all this. And the, and the thing I would leave you with is I would, I would literally start, this is what I did too. I made one flyer that had three services on it mm -hmm. and, um, you know, started from there. And with just that one flyer, that template that's in the thing, download that put three services that you're featuring, mm -hmm. um, you know, and get a beautiful new picture of you up there, have that logo, and you have that one thing that you can then mm -hmm. repurpose over and over and over again. Like sometimes I feel like we create too many things. I'm the worst at this. Mm -hmm. Just use the same damn thing you have. <laughs> yeah, Just, you know, it'll go out as a newsletter, it'll go out as an email, it'll go out as a, you know, um, we're even playing around with, this is like the, the next thing I'm doing. So we've created all these great guides. What are we doing with them? They're like sitting around, nobody knows about them. Um, so we have them up in a bunch of places, but we're actually getting into a little direct mail. So I've been going back and getting all of my clients, um, you know, actual addresses and having a simple postcard created and QR coding where it lives on my website. So, Hey, we've got brand new, blah, 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 blah. And, and just a QR code. And so then they can just hold up their phone and it takes them right to that. We actually think that that's um, not going to get as lost these days as like the email. Uh -huh. So just, you know, again, like, and again, you could do that. You could, you could create it in Canva, let us sit. And then even like what happens is I'm a terrible speller. <laughs> so we'll be like, Oh my God, that word is spelled wrong. And, <laughs> and we'll like go in and change it you're not ripping everything up. It's changed like the, you know, it's just linked to something and then mm -hmm. everywhere it's linked changes. So, um, that could be really, really, really fun. 
Mm -hmm. So we're kind of right at the 2.30 time. I do see Agnes has something about PowerPoint templates. Just tell us what you're thinking, Agnes, really quick for this one. No, I just heard that you mentioned that um, there was a template for a, for PowerPoint presentations or you were just asking if we were, um, if we wanted to. So um, I will say you can also do the same. We, we start, Cheryl and I started this process together because we create lots of courses together. Yeah. And um, we found we were like recreating the wheel over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And our, at the time we always use PowerPoint. Actually for most of our clients, we build for them in PowerPoint. Um, unless they want the templates in Canva, then we put them in Canva, but we work a lot of corporate and they don't really use the Canva, they use uh, you know, the PowerPoint. So um, mm -hmm. all of my PowerPoint decks for Cheryl are branded. So I have, uh, I wonder if I could show something just really quick, because the same concept works in PowerPoint if you actually prefer that. I'm trying mm -hmm. to just see if I can open mine up really quick and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, in brand in PowerPoint, it's called, um, oh, forgive me. This is like looking at the inside of somebody's um, handbag. <laughs> yeah, Shari, you might even have one handier than me. I'm trying to see, <laughs> open up this master. My, my PowerPoint is so slow. Oh. I um, I was asking because I'm using PowerPoint for my free master classes every month, just because that's what I know. It's not mm -hmm. because I think it's the best, but that's what mm -hmm. I use in college and graduate school, always PowerPoint. So that's all mm -hmm. I know. I'm going to use it tonight, actually, again, <laughs> my uh, PowerPoint presentation for my master class. Yeah, mine yeah. is opening. Cheryl, do you have one handy? Um, which one are you looking for? Anyone. Let me see what I can I was find. trying to pull up my signature. Oh, wait, here it comes. Did you get I'm it? Just not, I'm just not patient enough. <laughs> <laughs> so Agnes, do you know how to brand your PowerPoints using the slide master and set that up just the same way we did the templates in Canva? No, I can show you what I have, but I don't know if we have time or we can do it. I no, have it. We won't have time. We won't have time yeah. for this today. Okay. But, um, but this is something but that's that, actually another class that I teach is yeah. how to set up your PowerPoint because PowerPoint's actually, I think, one of the most powerful platforms out there. So and it has evolved so much that actually, I I'm gonna show you this one because it's it's really a very like we did this for a client. So um mm -hmm. and and I'll tell you this is what we do for this is what we do for our clients when they hire us. We build them their PowerPoint branded deck. Mm -hmm. And then this is oftentimes what they use to go and record themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so this is um, this is this PowerPoint. And if you look under the, what am I looking for, Cheryl? The slideshow, or do you want to? I was looking for the master slide. Why can't I find it? Oh, it's a view. Go to view. Oh, view. Thank you. And then slide master. I'm like clicking the button, like there's something wrong with the button. There's something wrong with me. <laughs> this, my little toolbar here is in the way. Here we go. Okay. So right. view. Uh-huh. And then slide, slide master. Slide master. So, so this is it. Like this is their full brand. So every time they go to build, like we built their presentation for them. This okay. is their presentation. You literally just click a slide, new slide. I want to use this layout and everything's ready for me. Nice, very nice. So you don't use Canva at all. You use the tools from Power, the PowerPoint. Um, a lot of times we use, um, sometimes both, but I would say the majority of the clients we do, especially on the corporate side are, are usually PowerPoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a really quick question. If you're using Canva, which and you're trying to present and you're sharing your screen, what is the right way to be presenting in Canva so that you can like just with one button like progress to the next slide? Because I had to like stop share, go in, change it. You know, do you, you know what I'm talking about? It's a technical. I thing. do. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheryl, can you can you take this one, or you want me to talk about uh, it? Let me see if I can. Um, so we're in here, 
and let's say you're Go talking about head. presenting right here yeah mm -hmm. so the type is standard so you can go to autoplay um, if you have notes you can do that you can present and record yourself um, we're just going to go advance at your own pace right mm -hmm. so you're presenting it and i want to go to the next slide mm -hmm. it's just the arrow keys on your keyboard so you oh. just go arrow up or arrow down or right or left and it helps you advance easily to the next okay. slide okay somehow i got stuck <laughs> doing that and i, I was yeah. like i know this should be easier yeah and i think cheryl too if you just take your cursor all the way to the right and click i think that moves it as well oh, yeah. yeah yeah so that yeah. does work too that yeah works see too. i don't use my cursor i always use the keys so i'm not the i'm a cursor, the I'm a cursor person yeah okay yeah and I just use my arrows. I like the shortcut keys to do stuff. And then, um, so that one's actually animated with the background coming in for the section. And you can animate all of your stuff. And then you just hit the escape key to get out of that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. This has all been right, super. Thanks so much. Well, I think we're saturated with good information today. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and it really is like just the basics and then getting in there and playing around. So you have all those templates for you, um, for your, for yourself. And again, you know, uh, make it simple, make it easy, make your first version and tweak it a bunch of times. Um, and you can always screenshot things and upload them through monday.com. We're happy to take a look at stuff for you. Um, that's the beauty of it um, for sure. And then Cheryl will be back about every six weeks. So if I look at the summer schedule, mm -hmm. we've invited her back. Um, we won't always do just this. I might just pull you guys and say, do you want to go deeper into Canva? Do you want to talk logos today? Do we want to make a you know, do we want to make our program flyers? Do you want to make a workbook? Like we can kind of play with that as we go along. Um, and then you'll be able to share her things as you're getting a little bit further into it. I know everybody's sort of like really into that, like information phase, mm -hmm. but as you're transition, that's why we have it set up. We want you to have a really good solid plan, Kathy, that's what you were talking about. And then how do I, you know, put the look and feel behind it to give it that whole rich thing. And as a matter of fact, coming up May 20th, I have a bonus session for you guys. It's a Friday. Um, we're doing the content design labs. We are gonna cover a little of both. So we're gonna go through, how do I get, how do I get ideas from my head into materials that I can be proud to share of? So part of it will be, how do I um, write content really successfully? And then we'll touch a little bit on some of the graphic design and templates to go along with it. So you'll get another, mm -hmm. another dose of that then. Are there any last minute questions we can answer for anybody? Okay, I have like five minutes. So I'm gonna hang on, I'm gonna let Cheryl go. Thank you for being here so much. If anybody really wants to spend five or 10 minutes just talking programs with me, um, I'm going to make myself available. Otherwise, I'm going to stop recording. This will get into.